Who am I as an ally to silence a woman? Ooh. It does silence feel worse to be like, hey, shut the fuck up. If it's not a guy, I will say it does actually feel worse. She said, what? How could they do something like that? Are you serious? What a thirsty in that fur. Not good. She's absolutely dead to me. That's because she died. I'm Sterling Mulberry. And I'm Blair Payton. And welcome to Bad Bad Behavior, Behavior. a morally questionable podcast where two unqualified friends, two unhinged comedians, determine once and for all what is good and what is bad. Hello and welcome to Bad Behavior. I'm Blair Payton. And I'm Sterling Mulbrain. In each episode of the podcast, a guest shares a morally questionable story and we decide if they were in the right or the wrong. Well, Sterling, what did you do last weekend? Why? Well, why are you? I'm I'm making conversation. (laughs) I did put up my Christmas tree. I just wanted to see if you're in that headspace, but maybe not. Wow. (laughs) Christmas tree? You know, Mariah Carey, you know, once (laughs) she she becomes. She yeah, when she becomes oh. present after Halloween and changes into a red outfit, the Christmas season is here. <laughs> Haven't you seen that video? No. Well, I'll send it to you. Okay, please do. Yeah. That's amazing. So that's what you were doing this weekend, putting your Christmas tree up. Well, it's funny. I well, I was supposed to go on a date, and then Sunday I was talking to the person and they gave me an out. And I honestly, I took it, but I was very honest with them. I was like, you know what? Sunday is a day for me to decompress. Sure. And I want to clean my apartment. I also want to put up my Christmas tree. Yeah. Plus, I was trapped because it's the the New York Marathon and they block oh, off First yeah. Avenue. So I'm like yeah. trapped up here. Yeah. And then when I took a picture of my tree and sent it to him, I was like, I put up my tree and they were Ooh, like, you're sending pictures. Well, I don't think sending a tree is like a huge well, flirt. You know, you never know. Um, I mean, it's well, not like I was standing naked beside it. That would be a flirting <laughs> technique. You know, <laughs> that's true. Well, I've been a little zonked. I'm going to be honest. And no one wants to hear about anyone being zonked. But unfortunately, that's the way I am. And I did something that's very unusual for me. I don't know if you're noticing something. I got my nails done. Yeah, I don't think I've ever seen you with your nails like painted. <laughs> I was so kind of exhausted by life this weekend. And can I say, now that you're talking about it, it just feels like your hands are more present by your face now. <laughs> <laughs> but continue. <laughs> it's not my culture. It's really not my culture. It's just that I was extremely... Sh- oh my God, can you hear my dog? She has some stuff to say. I've been a little stressed by life, and so I decided to do a little TLC this weekend. And by that, it means I got a manicure and pedicure, which I literally don't think I've done for over two years with my dear Love friend. That. And then we went and got the Haley Bieber smoothie from Erewhon, which is over $20. No. And you'll never believe this. This is actually the second time I was in Erewhon this week. And the first time, Blair, I went to a workout class. I have to park underneath an Erewhon. It's like the most bougie area of all time, this area. I come into the air one to go get my car, basically, not even to get food. Yeah. Guess who is there? Haley Bieber. No. Okay. Honestly, I've been telling everyone, and some people are like so excited, and some people don't care at all. I came my parents because they didn't know who they were. Okay. Spidey. I'm going to be <laughs> siding with your parents. Who is Spidey? Heidi Montek and Spencer Pratt from the Hills. Oh, okay. I don't know them by their couple name. Even I just flesh know them blood individually. With their kids. I go, whoa, I'm in Los Angeles now. I couldn't believe it. I was going to go get a smoothie, and then I got one later in the week, but then they were in there and I was so shocked. I just was like, let me go to my car. This is too shocking. You know what's funny? What? I purchased her single that she recorded in the mid aughts. Oh, on that iTunes. one was classic. <laughs> He purchased. <laughs> so how was the smoothie, though? It was pretty good, but we did have to wait 30 minutes for a smoothie, which is like, what's going on? And I think it was with like tax and tip $25, which like that should be outlawed. That's well, how big is the smoothie? Are you it's getting your not money's even worth? that big? No. Mm-mm. Yeah, not even that big. But yeah, then let's see what else. It was my friend's birthday. I made her a birthday cake, which was exciting. But no Christmas tree? You know, I don't care about the holidays, unfortunately. You know that Christmas makes me melancholy. Wow. Okay, but what I know is going to get me some pep in my step, energy in my soul, is our guest today. I bet you he has his Christmas tree up. I can't wait to ask. (laughs) Okay, you guys, we are so excited to have a dear friend of the podcast. You know him from his hit podcast, Good Christian Fun, as well as Gilmore Guys, never forget it. And so we are so excited to have him on the podcast today, making his brave return to bad behavior. Please welcome Kevin T. Porter. 
Well, Kevin, thank you so much for coming on the episode today. Welcome back. Oh, thank you so much. How does it feel being a two-timer? Uh, how many two-timers have you had? Who, you who am are I in the our class third. With? You're our third. Who are the other two? Um, dear friends, we have Kelsey Harper coming in number one, who I, you know, do a show with. Friend of the pod, Evan Walter, coming in number two, who he oh, just God. did our famous Halloween episode. Mary Lou Henner over here with the memory. <laughs> okay. We have Kevin T. Porter in <laughs> number three. How do you feel about that? Are you pissed that you weren't number one? That's good company because I've met both of those people mm-hmm. in real life. Uh, Who do you like I- better if you had to pick between the two? Well, I've spent more time with Evan. Have you met Kelsey in real life? Yeah, I took a bunch of pictures with her and you <laughs> in the park. Okay, someone's not Mary Lou Hinner. <laughs> Jeez, Lou. We're Wait. really, listeners, we're kind of debating if I have an amazing memory or a terrible. And jury's out. It's kind of it's kind of going in both Like ways. America's Mary Lou Hinner. You're so right. You're so right. You did take a lot of photos of us in a park. And I, Wait, you were the photographer for that? I sure was, yeah. We, we were in a wow. park and Kevin were like, who's that? For the, the purpose. Like, hey, 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 whoa, 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 <laughs> yeah, chica, pica, tuta. It was for the purposes of the poster and the artwork for Sterling and Kelsey's show. Phones down. This was not any sort of like, <laughs> hey, I'm a big Hollywood hotshot and the one thing you need is some. Um, you know, I wasn't thinking that, but now I am. <laughs> You have that voice right up your sleeve, Kevin. I know. Well, I use it in other situations, not this one. Kevin, can I ask can I ask you a question real quick? Oh, please. We were we were talking about this in the opening. Um, because as you know, Halloween is over, which means Christmas is here. Is your Christmas tree up? No. Well, there's not gonna oh, be. Oh, so a you Christmas hate Jesus. Tree. Got it. Yeah, but those are two separate <laughs> <laughs> issues for me. Okay. You're right, but it has nothing to do with the Christmas tree. This came up the other day as like, you know, it's like a little icebreakery question of like, do you put up your decorations after Halloween or after Thanksgiving? What kind of Christmas person are you? And I think I'm none of them this year. I might put up a stocking for my dog and for myself <laughs> as I did a couple. Of, what, what's so funny about that? Do you put stuff in your own stocking? Uh, no, that's just for decoration. But I put stuff in his. Yeah. That's sweet. Wow, you're not going to have any you're not going to have any tinsel or mistletoe? I don't think so. Yeah, mistletoe in your own home? Hey, the, to the UPS guy like, "Hey, can you do my bring that package in here?" <laughs> oh, no. Oh, this, oh, this is, is so embarrassing. It is tradition, isn't it? <laughs> and then- I mean, it could be an IRL love match. Okay? So, an IRL love story, which Kevin, you know a thing or two about. Because Kevin not to blow up your spot, is kind of, I want to say this, the Los Angeles, the new Los Angeles matchmaker. You're the new Patty Stanger of Los Angeles, would you say? I'm gunning for Patty's spot, for <laughs> sure. Certainly. Uh, and it is, it's fun to try new things, to like seize <laughs> upon the collective fatigue that everyone has, that we all complain about, about app stuff, and then try to do things in real life. Sterling's referring to a party that a couple of friends of mine and I have thrown a few times over the last few months where everyone invited just so happens to be a person who's uncoupled. Uncoupled? Okay, Gwyneth. I know. <laughs> consciously uncoupled. Yeah, we're all consciously uncoupled. But but there is a certain patina of cringe associated with the idea of a singles party or singles mis- mixer. Well, of course. Okay. Right? So I try to stay away from some of that language, even though it's absolutely arbitrary and like self-projected. Well, how many parties have you had so far? So far, it's been two. There's going to be a third one in a couple of weeks. So what is your success rate of the two you've had? The first one was very good. In that a lot of people became friends, but the ratio was not what you wanted it to be as far as Mm. like men to women, I should say. (laughs) And this was like, unfortunately, unfortunately, it did lean heteronormatively, even though there were queer people Mm, at all. Uh, (laughs) But uh, the second one we had, you know, we had four or five first dates come out of that. Well, wait, with this third one, are you going to make it a little gayer? Well, yeah, there's at least there's at least. Two gay people I know coming. The Blair, problem Blair, is would you, you don't fly out. Blair, would you do want to fly out? I do have a friend flying out from New York City to come to the party. Wait, wait. Wow. Is it a boy that's gay? It's not. It's a wonderful oh. woman who's straight. Uh, <laughs> sorry to disappoint. So wait, what makes your party so legendary that someone has to fly from one coast <laughs> to another? 
Like, what uh, are you doing at these parties? I like to say the curation. Karaoke? No, you know, karaoke is one of those things. We thought about it so much, man. Like, we really did think about, okay, what's the thing that's the most accessible, you know, activity for everyone to participate in that feels like you're actually getting to know each other? That's not embarrassing. Sex. That doesn't just favor the extroverts. And we ended up with sex. That is that is true. <laughs> we ended up with, like, uh, a sort of version of bar trivia for it, which is, like, everyone being in groups of six to eight people, and, you know, you do learn. I feel like we can probably think back to times when we learned a lot about people in our lives when playing a game with them. So uh, true. Whether yeah. it be bar trivia or fishbowl or categories or something. Yeah. You understand, you know, a lot of things that wouldn't come out in just direct one on one conversation. You understand people's competitiveness, their knowledge how intense or how lighthearted they are, et cetera. And you're but observing. But also in trivia, you can really learn how stupid people are. And that's what they learned quick about me. <laughs> I wasn't getting any questions right. I was like, well, this isn't a good first impression. I would imagine <laughs> at your table, though, you were probably quite charming about how fucking stupid you <laughs> were. <laughs> here's, the thing, here's the thing that's kind of surprising about me. I get really shy. I get really shy easily when I don't know anyone. Mm -hmm. And I get quiet. So I think, my t I, think I hate to be like this. I was not I didn't make an impression at my table I think I made a, could have made an impression at the party overall once um I was back with my girl by my side once I have a friend by my side I'll be chatty again by sure. myself I'm, I'm quiet <laughs> well did you have a cocktail to make it you know make I needed look? more I think <laughs> we literally had, ran out of uh alcohol they ran out this last one pro is like you don't have to be like oh is your wife here? Whatever it is, you know. But con, if you go up to Sterling's somebody. second question when she meets any man. <laughs> yeah. Hey, how's it going? Uh, yeah. How about the Dodgers? That's pretty cool. Anyway, is your wife here? And if not, where is she? <laughs> <laughs> she seems cool. I'd love to be friends. Um, but then the, I guess the con of it is that if you go up to somebody to chat, you're kind of being like, well, I'm interested in you. You know what I'm saying? Even though that's maybe not the case, but it's like you have more of like a target on you. You know what I'm saying? You're saying that like, anything could be misconstrued as I want to be romantic with you by just talking marry you. to them. Yeah, because I had a gun at the end of the night. Kevin said it was kind of reality TV show vibes. You know, we all had to get engaged by the end. Um, so it's high stakes, you know. Well, well, yeah, someone even said you should have because we have a little check in table when people come in where they get their little assignment for the table that they're going to be at, et cetera. Is this like at a church it. hall? Where's this at? <laughs> this is, this is in a friend's backyard. Okay. Uh, and he does live inside of a church. So oh. yes. <laughs> uh, someone said, have shots at the table. That's good. I would have loved to take a shot. Do you think so? You think that would be good? Okay. Well, Kevin, I know you don't have your Christmas tree up, no. but we are getting into the holidays. And if there's one thing that I know about you, it's that you love to bake. Yeah. Big bacon energy. You that's got your own true. Instagram account that's baking. Oh, yeah. Do you and, really? I sure do. And what is it? Blair, it actually has a lot of followers. It's got way more followers than both of us just for baking. Kevin Bacon Shop, spelled B-A-K-I-N, shop, with one P, not like the old shop. <laughs> How are you? Do you feel like there's any um, fall baking trends that you're, you know, any like flavors that are kind of in the zeitgeist? Well, it's high time for pie time right now. Of course. Um, because that, that is the acceptable dessert of choice for the next couple months, certainly. At the Ooh. end of this month, there's a whole... Yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, they're beautiful. They really it's are beautiful. Apricot cheesecake that Blair's looking at. <laughs> <laughs> Mocha chocolata yaya pie? Yeah, they all oh. have horrible names. <laughs> I am looking forward to like the little marathon that I do for Thanksgiving week where I try to make at least six or so pies. That, that is one so many pies, with. six pies in a week. Yeah. Well, some wow. of them are small. Some of them are like mini pies. Baby which is pie? Fun. What's yeah. your favorite pie to make? Oh, gosh. You know, for Thanksgiving, uh, my friend Rishi Hirway, his mother, uh, had this wonderful recipe for a mango custard pie that I like making mm. every year. That's like so good. It's got a graham cracker cardamom crust mm. that complements it really well and and it's just unlike most Thanksgiving sort of pies that you would have. Do you make a sweet potato pie? I love sweet potato. I have. Yeah, I made my first one last year, actually. That's not one I 
default to too, too much. I think the one I probably default to is like a coconut cream pie. Well, which one will you make me and send me for the holidays? Yeah, what are you going to make and send Blair across country? Ooh, you know, I would do the milk bar pie, which is the artist I just saw that one. the crack pie. Yeah, which... Really? That's... You would do milk bar pie? That's kind of oh, very... Yeah. It's still in, it's still in trend. Are you asking me if it's in trend? I have no idea. I'm not. <laughs> I'm not exactly the trendiest fellow you've probably had on the show. I'm wearing a Garfield sweatshirt right now from 1979 as we speak. So I'm not Garfield's really on classic. the cutting edge, as or yeah, is he timeless and eternal? Mm-hmm. He's an icon. Hating Mondays never ages, never goes out of style. So yeah, I don't. I don't know what the trends are. You know, like my my TikTok FYP is not food focused and that's my failing for not feeding it the right stuff wait what is it focused on oh gosh i mean blair you basically just asked what are you wearing in terms of vulnerability uh of a question is like what is your fyp the fyp right now is like a lot of dogs um Mm. which i hesitate to say because i don't want to be a dog guy because that's a particular kind of guy (laughs) that three guys have to avoid trying to be uh, yeah. These days, uh, which is hard because you do have a dog. So ultimately, you are a dog guy. It is it, but not all people who own dogs are dog guys, and there is a distinction mm, between. Totally. Them. Would it be better to be a cat guy? Uh, it I would be better no. because it's more. But but for a lot of people, it's more feminine coded, and there is this sense of like, oh, if he has a cat, then I can date him because he's not like, well, I gotta get home to my dog after like six hours or whatever. The rest of it is like. It's a it's a lot of hope core videos right now, which mm, is like that's good. like this this seven year old girl and this old guy became. Could you open your TikTok right now? I just want to see what the first video would be. <laughs> oh, no, yeah, that's, that's too vulnerable. This is actually no, 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 no. I'll I do th- it too. I'll I do think it we too. should do it. Let's you all three I'll do, do it. it. I'm actually really scared of what it will be for me. Okay, the first one is Ooh, dogs and leaves wow that's it's really a little, it's a little corgi of course it's kamala to taylor swift that's very me <laughs> oh no or it's another kamala moving. to taylor swift <laughs> is brutal it's literally it's <laughs> only politics my entire fyp is politics right now mine is stuff i can buy on tiktok shop <laughs> this one helps with male breasts <laughs> Oh my god that's interesting wow well i guess we really found out a lot about each other and that's beautiful yeah A classic game we play on this podcast called Heaven or Hell. And because you're such an avid baker, our topic today is baking. Wow. And so we are going to present some different baking scenarios for you, and you're going to decide if this is heaven, hell, or if you're in different purgatory. Okay. A friend asking you to make their birthday cake and bring it to the restaurant, which means you have to plan out the logistics of getting it to the restaurant. Oh, heaven. This is easy. <laughs> this is easy. That was easy? Peasy, lemon squeezy. I've done this. I'm not, I'm not exaggerating for effect. I've done this 32 times. <laughs> <laughs> like I, the, the idea of like, oh, it's a birthday cake that I'm baking for someone. Oh, we need something to slice the cake. Oh, we need paper plates. Oh, we need utensils. Oh, we need something to carry the cake in. I've done that. I love doing that. Well, Sterling needs help with that, apparently. I did that actually this weekend because I made you my- You baked a cake? I made my friend's 30th birthday cake this what weekend. What was the flave? Um, it was, I did like Claire Saffitt's recipe. So I did um like a chocolate buttercream, no, chocolate buttermilk cake. And okay. I did chocolate cream cheese frosting with raspberries Ooh. on top. Classic. Oh, very good. But just, well, I don't have a cake. I don't have a, a cake um carrier okay isn't that embarrassing yeah it's a little humiliating i had my friend order one it didn't come in time she had to put it in tupperware (laughs) so we're just it actually rained saturday night i don't know if you recall so i was actually running with cake to restaurant rain and then you have to give it to them and then you have to kind of do a famous thing which is pay a cake cutting fee which is really just them storing it in another um room for an hour and then i cut the cake and then give them 30 dollars, which is so cool (laughs) Can I tell you something? <laughs> Can I tell you something for real? Never paid a cake cutting fee. What kind How of are you doing that in Los go? Angeles? You've gone to 30, you brought 32 cakes to restaurants. You're not paying cake cutting fees? No. But see, this this was why I thought you might say this was hell, Kevin. But you easily said heaven. Easily. Yeah. I mean, do you even have to run it by the person? Well, I, 
well, there's like a bouncer. I mean, I tried to earlier this year. I was so like disturbed by what happened to me. I, I went to a famous place called Bar Flor- Flores. Okay. This place doesn't oh, yeah. even have food. The bouncer was like, you may not. I brought cupcakes for my other friend's 30th. And um, this bouncer was like, you can't bring that in here. We're like, what? We Googled online. They said you could. They're like, no. I'm like, okay, can we just bring it in? We won't eat it. And he's like, yeah, but if I even see you take a bite, I'm throwing you all out. <laughs> I was Very like, cool. amazing. You know where this would never happen? Where? Olive Garden. Yeah, that is true. It would they never would let happen you do that? in Olive Garden. Mm-hmm. Your family mm-hmm. there, baby. I, I, I got to be honest. It happened, the, 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 it happened to me one time. I didn't have to pay a fee. They just literally wouldn't fucking let me in. Yeah. And I could have gotten around it, and I know how to for next time. Uh, but it was at Top Golf. Top Golf. Wow. I know. Who? Wow. Top Golf for a birthday. Yeah, it was fun to go there, but it wasn't fun when they said, is that homemade or store bought? And I said homemade. And they said, then we can't let it in. Wait, so they would have put store bought in. Isn't that fucking funny? Like, it must be like, <laughs> who knows what the logic is behind that word? It's like, well, if it's homemade, maybe he laced it with MDMA and, like, you know, <laughs> they'll be flying off the walls or something. I don't know. I don't actually know. That is the... so random. Well, good to know. Not going to top golf. Okay. Getting asked out on a dessert date. Heaven. Yeah, of course. Okay, but what if it's one that's like kind of like froyo, and then you have to kind of like decide how many toppings you're doing? Well, your now you're or... adding you're adding specifics to it that were <laughs> well, not yeah, that's inherent how the game goes. The question. <laughs> Is that true? You ask the question, and then you literally change the nature. Of the oh, we, we, like, we like to test the limits. We, we like, like to, to test push the limits. It. Yeah. Okay, I understand. I understand. Here's the thing. I feel like a dessert date, which I don't know if I've gone on since college i guess is like it's just very short it's good if you're kind of like i guess want to like a quick read on somebody but it's like a lot of those places don't have good like seating areas you know see what i'm saying oh it's kind of like a little awkward well that it's it's so this is why the question is so important i guess to be general because you can you can choose the location as far as like a place to hang out like earth cafe earth cafe ideal for a dessert date i'm not kidding there's one on colorado boulevard they what have is all that? kinds of great like it's well, where the, pass, the cast of entourage used to go on the show all the time <laughs> earth cafe is that true oh that's how yeah! i knew it is like it's like I, that's when i moved to la in college i was like oh my god they filmed an entourage all hey the baby time bro here. we're going to earth cafe again. <laughs> yeah, they were that's always awesome. going to earth cafe no but that's like a, a nice little ca- sort of candlelit place a lot of outdoor seating candlelit. and, and <laughs> a little bit like at night they have the little heat lamps on and they're kind of candlelight in nature okay next one holding meringue above your head to see if it's whipped enough blair says is uh, this real that was when he goes is this real <laughs> i've never heard of that how how can you tell if the whip no, it doesn't drop onto your head it oh you turn upside down like you're at dairy queen yeah so oh. Blair was envisioning just like you hold it. You're like, I guess it's good. <laughs> yes. I don't know. Sorry, <laughs> listeners. Saying- you're holding a bowl upside down. So it could yes. fall right onto your head. But if it doesn't, it. it means it's whipped it up. Okay. Yeah. Uh, do you not- have to do that? No. Okay. <laughs> you don't have <laughs> That's to. That's why I'm fun. a little confused by this question. <laughs> really? I'm always doing that. I'm always doing that. Well, I understand tipping it over, but it does not need to be above your head. I like You're to do You're playing with fire, baby. That's cute. You want a little stakes to it. Okay, I understand. This doesn't feel like Kevin at all, but okay. I'll... Okay, Kevin, your next one. Hey, you don't know speech. me. Maybe it is me. Yeah, well, based on how you answered the other ones. Okay. Giving a whole speech before your friends try your baked creation on why it's probably bad and you should have done it a million different ways and you're so sorry and you understand if they don't even want to try it. Now, this is sterling. <laughs> this is me. Hell. No, I wouldn't do this. Anytime I make literally anything, I'm like, okay, but this is like why one wrong. This is like probably a little dry and like I'm really sorry and like it was supposed to be like this and like I, it probably sucks and I don't understand. I'll give it one caveat where I'm like, it came out slightly uneven on the crust, but I think I, I think I crushed it. Like, I like, I like giving a little confident teaser. But what if you give too much and then people eat it and they're like, this is disgusting. Well, I'll let you know when it happens, King, because it hasn't fucking <laughs> happened yet. Well, in my face, meringue in my face. Meringue, meringue all over Upside face. down. That's right. <laughs> and inside out. Okay. All right. Next one. 
Baking a dessert for a friend's party, but the party is in LA and everyone is gluten slash dairy free. Heaven. Oh. More for you? No, I think it's fun to like flex a little bit and find a good gluten free mm, a challenge. Well, there was one, there was a birthday party last year. Uh, my friends Max and Julia, who just got engaged on, se- on September 11th, by the way, which is pretty <laughs> wow, awesome. Beautiful. <laughs> So they'll never forget their anniversary, blah, blah, blah. But anyway, their, their birthdays are one day apart. So they had a joint birthday party last year and they're vegan. And I never made a vegan birthday cake before. So I did. And it came out fucking banging. It was so wow. good. Wow. Okay. Because that earth balance, like the vegan butter now is pretty mm. good. Like it's a really good substitute um, for, you know, what you need. And then you use like some form of like vegetable or coconut oil for the actual cake instead of eggs. And Mm -hmm. yeah, I I like that challenge. I like figuring out how to, um, yeah. All right. Our grand finale. Cleaning up. Oh, hell. I mean, (laughs) I don't have a dishwasher. Um, You don't have a dishwasher? Everything is by hand, which is why whatever place I live in after this, if it has a dishwasher, I'm going to feel like I'm flying. (laughs) Like that's it's, really crazy. No, dishwasher. everything I do is hand wash, put in oh, the rag, let it dry. Rag. Like, I that know. Sucks. I'm sorry. Yeah. It's Not hey, fair. thank you. Thank you for saying that. You have a story today that is just I, Oh, I have such a good story. <laughs> The story where we were saying, ooh, scary. Which way could it go? So, Kevin, whenever you're ready, why don't you tell us your tale where it's hard to tell if you're in the right or the wrong? So, I feel a little sensitive, I think, when it comes to the chitter chatter of people that I watch things with, specifically when it comes to. When it's not, uh, uh, I'll I'll paint a hypothetical scenario. Like say it's a handful of us. No one's really that invested. We're all just kind of like eating snacks, tuning in and out. The subtitles are on so we can like kind of zone in and out as we need and listen to it regardless. That's one thing. But then there's something else when it's like everyone comes over for specific attention. As far as like, hey, we're all going to watch whatever. the, The Sunday night thing, Succession. or we're going to watch this movie and we're turning the lights off and we all want to do this thing. So what I found is that, and I've been friends with this person for like six years, but what's come to the fore is that in situations, and this is important, not only at home, but specifically also in public spaces at theaters, this person will talk to me at the volume that I'm talking to you right now. Mm. which is to me, not good. (laughs) I like talking to someone at a movie theater. If it's literally in their ear like this. Yeah. During the trailers. Hush tones. Can actually can't even hear him at all. That was a really good whisper. But someone being like, Oh wow. That stuff can't Mm -hmm. handle. And it's gotten to the point because it's, it's gone on so long where I'm like, Oh, if I sit next to this person, I will not have a good time. I know I will be distracted. I know I will be annoyed. And it's gone on so long that it now feels weird to bring it up and say, hey, <laughs> please shut up. In the most respectful of terms. So they're talking full volume, but are they nonstop talking? Or it's just when they do talk, it's full volume? Uh, depending. Sometimes it is nonstop. Okay. And then sometimes they just interject. But it's gotten to the point where like... <laughs> so it's like an anxious attachment. Perhaps. <laughs> there was one uh, maybe like six months ago. My friend and I got tickets to see a movie, a specific showtime, a specific theater. And then she was in a group chat with this person, my friend that I was going to go see this movie with, with, with the person, talking problem mm-hmm. person. They said, hey, we're going to go see this movie at this theater at this showtime. And it was the same one. Mm. And instead of saying like, oh, great, let's sit next to each other. We'll see you there. We said nothing. (laughs) And then when we heard them walk in, because there was another loud person in the group, we hid where our seats were. We just kind of like went like this and and, and turned away from the aisle because we knew they were like rows ahead of us or behind Uh us rather. So they wouldn't see us. 
And then as soon as the movie was over, we rushed out. Because it's like, it, it really is like, I won't have a good time and I'll be so annoyed. And I don't right. want to be the shh. I don't want to be the scold. There's nothing worse than someone saying shh. They're so annoying. Unfortunately. When they are talking to you, like, what's uh, are they asking like, so my sister does this. She'll ask me like, what's going to happen? I'm like, I don't know. I'm seeing it for the first time too. Is it like that kind of questions or? Yeah. Okay. Or are they just It'll saying like, like, whoa, that's scary. He needs to go to therapy. <laughs> like that sort of like about one of the characters like oh okay yeah is he a little or i don't know the gender sorry are they a little bit of class clown like are she, they it may be you know what and maybe that that intersects with the dilemma of it because who am i as an ally to silence a woman <laughs> it does Silencing feel worse to be like hey shut the fuck up if it's yeah. not a guy i will say it does actually feel worse <laughs> <laughs> so you think if it was a boy you'd shush him up yeah i think i might well, it depends mm. on how close I was with them, too. How close are you to the loud talker? Medium. I think it's medium. Like, we definitely have, like, friendship, intimacy. I could lean on them for it. They're a very good friend. They're a very good friend to me. Um, but we're not texty every day. No, all of each other's shit all the time. Is this the one thing that's standing in the way from being a good friend with them? The loud talking? <laughs> Man, that would be amazing if it was. No, 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 no. I don't, I don't think. If not for this, we'd be soaring in the <laughs> in the high heavens of friendship or whatever. But it's one of those things where it's like, oh, I'm not going to invite them to anything where it's like we're going to watch something because, like, and I actually I do remember during Succession, it was the one where a certain character died, and she was like, oh my god, and it's like, shut up. And I'm more, I'm maybe I'm more sensitive about it. Than sure. Than other mm. people, but hmm. wow. Okay, but so I guess our- the dilemma is like, can I ever say anything, or has it gone on too long? Mm. Because what I'm doing now is just like I I'm not gonna go avoiding. or invite them to stuff where we're watching something. Have you thought about fighting fire with fire? <laughs> no, because I don't want to be that guy. Well, what if you let them pick the movie? that they want to see and then the entire time you don't shut the fuck up and then at the end be like how did you like that i think they would welcome that because they're not sensitive Ooh. like that that's the thing oh, no. you can't you can't fight this it's you cannot reform this is my thought mm, that's just who they are mm. okay i guess well my question on the moral conundrum is like has she ever like found out that she wasn't getting invited to things? Cause right now it seems like you're avoiding, but there's been no real repercussions. You just kind of feel guilty. Yeah. I just, I just feel like I'm not being a person of integrity. I'm being kind of a shitty friend, I guess mm. by not bringing mm. it up. Are you typically honest with this person outside of their loud talking? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But when someone's, there are people, this, this is what I'm bumping up against and you guys might feel the same way. There are people where it's like, you do trust them to be like, if you're like, hey, stop being annoying. They're like, oh yeah, sorry. You know, and, <laughs> yeah. and that you would hopefully receive it the same way if they said it to you. Yeah. And then there's some people who you may have love and respect for in your life where it's like that love and respect does not mean they have the same capacity to be not annoying. Yes. And that they'd be like, what? What do you mean? You know, that it would be like, huh? Yeah. Even though to me, it is sort of like a, it feels like an empirical ethic. It does feel like don't talk at a movie where there's like other people that aren't our friend group that would be like annoyed. Yeah. But, but they may not feel that way. And so it's like, so I'm coming up against the thing where it's like, do we have literal like value difference in that way? You know, I think where I'm standing right now is good behavior. And I'm going to caveat with this. I think if they were like a really good friend and say they were like you were in a friend group and every single person is always invited to like whatever thing and like they – it's like obvious you're excluding them, you know, or like it gets back to them so easily. But if it's like, oh, you have like a diverse friend group, it's not like – this one friend group that it's like one of six and it's like this person is like so obviously not there – I think it's like, look, that that is how they like to live their life. They love to chat. They love to be a little bit loud. They're hopefully going to other things with people that are also doing that. That's not your cup of tea. So you're removing yourself from those situations. And yeah, you could have a conversation with them, I guess. But are they going to change? I'm guessing. 
I'm hoping they're in their 30s. They are in their 30s. Okay. Would it have been a red flag if they were in their 20s? No, I guess it's fine to have friends of multiple ages. To have intergenerational friendships. Well, you're being weird if you're hanging out with someone in your 20s. Just kidding. <laughs> I literally just, I I was just in my 20s. So that's not weird at all. Um, so you know what? Well, also in your 30s, I'm like, you're more baked, right? 21? Maybe you could get in there and say, stop talking. 30, I know what you mean. Whatever. You're like, well. This might be what it is. And there are certain things where it's like, obviously, People can change. I do believe yes. that people can change. I'm not one of those that's like, people never change. Ever. But I do think the crucial caveat to that is at what age, at what time frame, and in what circumstances can they change? Or stuff like that. You do wonder if it's like, if you're 34 and you're like, nah, 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 like with other people in the theater, is there someone that's going to be like, actually, you shouldn't do that? And you're like, well, okay, you're right. Like, I, <laughs> yeah. I, it feels far-fetched. Yeah. yeah, I agree. So that's why I'm going today, Kevin. You're letting me off easy. Good behavior. Appreciate it. Blair? Yeah, Sterling, you you brought up some very valid points, and I heard both of them with my ears. Mm -hmm. And uh, I have to agree, you know? You're not forcing this loud-ass friend into a box by saying, hey, you need to be quiet. You're allowing them to live their authentically annoying self, (laughs) you know? And if that means you have to put up a barrier by hiding from them in a theater, then that's what you have to do to protect (laughs) your soul. So you are protecting yourself and your eardrums because at a certain point, when I think of my father, he is so deaf that the level at which he speaks now is almost piercing my eardrums. And that could be something that you're faced with in the future. So by recognizing this now and realizing what locations you can go to with this person is imperative. So just don't watch stuff with them. Wow. So he's protecting his ear health. That's right. Mm-hmm. Wow. I'm okay. also allowing this person to live their best life. Exactly. So it's actually Authentically. quite affirming of who they are. Yeah. Exactly. Rather than like, I'm going to fix you. It's like, I'm going to let you be. I'm going to let you be and I'm not going to invite you anywhere. (laughs) Where the world may have torn you down, I'm going to say, no, I accept you. Do not come over. As long as nothing is playing that is vital As long as nothing's being watched. As long as nothing's being watched. Mm -hmm. Kevin, you have been deemed good good behavior. behavior. Wow. Which is kind of unusual for a bad boy like me. That is really unusual for a bad boy like you. It is kind of crazy. And that's why we actually have... Um, a little speech that we've actually written for you today because we know it can be a little nerve-wracking to get an award and have to give an acceptance speech on the spot, Um, especially for a bad boy, a once bad boy like you. Wow. Thank you all so much. There's really nothing like being deemed a good guy. There's not many of us out there, but with this award, I can now say I definitely am. So any friends, family... Or I guess all of you strangers listening, just remember me, Kevin T. Porter, is a really, really good guy. Wow. Wow. That's beautiful. Despite whatever Ellen might have said. (laughs) Wait, oh my God, Kevin, we forgot to talk about a huge thing. Kevin was featured in Ellen DeGeneres' trailer to her stand-up comedy. Wait, what? For tearing, because Kevin kind of, you know, brought down Ellen DeGeneres. Oh, yeah. Kevin, how did you feel when you saw that? I'm sorry they blurred out your name, but... It is so funny that they blurred out their net. Like no, <laughs> no offense taken. It's it's awesome, kind of. <laughs> it was in the. It's in the special. It's in like the first because the special, her new special, where it's like, well, I'm leaving because you don't want me anymore, or whatever she it, said. Like, and then we don't want me at colon Kevin T. Porter. This goes out to you. That's right. Does the T stand for takedown? It does. Yeah. <laughs> They knew I would uh, take down prominent queer celebrities. Uh, <laughs> Good. Yep, I'm gay. Uh, oh, Did they have to ask if they could use that tweet? No, of course not. Mm. No, what was wild about it is people ascribing what I think is probably too much weight to the tweet over the last few years, which is where I solicited, like, tell you know, stories about Ellen being very mean because she's very much known for having that reputation in town. And when people would say, bro, because then afterwards, you know, there was actual journalism by Chrissy Andoli over at BuzzFeed. And then that led to internal investigations that led to the dismissal of people who were sexual harassers on the staff. And then that led to the end of the show. 
And people would say, bro, you killed Ellen. I'm like, no, <laughs> no, 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 no. It was like, you know, it was like Dakota Johnson threw the first brick at Ellen wall. It was just like a little link in the chain, right. you know? And then but it, it's but then it's very funny while downplaying this, and I sincerely do believe that it had less to do with than other things. That then there's the special where Ellen's like, "You did this to me." <laughs> that it's like the start of it is like, "But is the queen of nice actually the queen of mean?" And it cuts to the tweet. It's like, "Oh, I guess according to her, I did do this." <laughs> That's weird. <laughs> that like, is literally so crazy. She's kind of giving me credit that I don't feel like I have. <laughs> well, yeah. how do you feel now that you have this credit? You know, don't ever let anyone tell you that posting can't change the world. That's so. That is so true. That's why we're posting reels yeah. about this podcast every day. Slowly changing the world one, <laughs> one reel at a time. Yeah, you could like accidentally cancel someone. Do you um, have anyone, I guess, you know, for last moments on the podcast, someone that you're interested in taking down next? Oh, gosh. Well, everyone knows how toxic and fucked up Maria Bamford is behind the scenes. So I think she's next. I'm just kidding. She's the nicest person. <laughs> I literally was like, <laughs> really? Wow. No. I was literally like, who's the nicest comedian I've ever met? And it would be her. Now, before we wrap up, can you tell listeners where they can follow, find you, when new episodes of your podcast are dropping every week? For sure. You can follow me at Kevin T. Porter everywhere. Onlyfans.com slash Kevin T. Porter, Kevin T. Porter on Letterboxd, and then Good Christian Fine. We're still dropping episodes behind the paywall every Wednesday. And that's our show. Thanks so much for listening today. We absolutely hate to do this. We hate it. But it would mean the world to us if you can subscribe to the podcast wherever you get podcasts, rate and review. Follow us at Bad Behavior NYC on Instagram and TikTok. Thanks again for listening. And remember, whatever your moral status, we are always here to judge. Bye. Bye. Do you think that was good?